Hello viewers, in Gran Turismo 7 we now have the Nürburgring Sprint Circuit in the game. This was added as part of update 1.31 and when it came out I felt like it would be good in Group 4 cars and that just how it happens to be this week's Daily Race B. So we're going to start from 15th, we're going to start from the back and see if it's any good in Group 4 cars. How does it play out? How does this track respond to 16 maniacs going around it? as quickly as possible. Well, let's find out. Firstly, to begin with, up behind the Barry Boy 2. Not sure if they are related to Barry R, but um, I'm sure we'll find out in due time. So coming out of turn three, into the right of turn four, we're gonna try and nip underneath here on the exit and get the overtake done on the way out, as indeed we do. And then here is the new corner. I say new, but new to the game. We're going to cut through to the right hand side which cuts off pretty much half of the Grand Prix circuit and shortens this circuit quite significantly. Uh, or shortens the GP circuit should I say. So we have a couple of cars off here, two cars wide. That's going to hand me two positions for free and then we're going to get a third one here with the Atenza in front with the one second penalty and perhaps a fourth with another car here, the Spaniard uh, going very slow after having served a penalty going to be four positions in one straight pretty much and um, it's going to be a p10 just there though as you can see going a couple of pixels beyond the track limit get myself the tasty little 0.5 second penalty not as bad as what's going on at the Watkins Glen daily race C at the moment where you're getting 10 second penalties for hitting the wall but um, still annoying nonetheless now lap two would therefore be a lap of trying to create distance from my from myself and the car behind in the attempt of not losing a position when I serve this penalty just around this right hander here let's see if that's going to be the case there may be uh, someone serving a penalty just in front as well which could assist me so there we go serve the penalty car behind getting very close bit of contact in front as we're going to go to the right hand side we're going to lose a position but also gain one then immediately this car kind of breaks a bit early. I'm going to go, okay, well, thank you very much. I'll just dive up the inside and take that back. He tries to fire back on the exit. doesn't quite work. And it's going to be a safe ninth position. So, so far, the Nürburgring Sprint Circuit turning out to be quite an interesting track for racing. And I think Group 4 does suit it quite well. I would like to try it perhaps also in Group 3. But um, I think this kind of speed of car works quite well around this size of circuit so i think it was a good choice overall by polyphony can you imagine that polyphony making an inspired daily race decision and here stevie wonder of all people is not quite going to see the track limits there through turn three and uh, get themselves a nice 0.5 second penalty amazing stuff now into the hairpin a little bit deep oh my goodness really not seeing the the full picture there is uh, Mr. Stevie Wonder. He's doing a, a fairly good job though overall when you consider all the factors that he can't actually see. So to be fair the fact that he's actually completed two and a half laps so far is actually pretty decent. I'm not going to go too hard on him. Uh, but on the exit here this guy's serving a penalty. Stevie Wonder also doing the same. And so now in a, a rather clear P7 I can concentrate on trying to catch up with the guy in front who has something I want, which is P6. And we're going to do our utmost on lap four to try to catch up. And this was quite a good race. You know, six laps, I think, for Daily Race B is a good length. As actually, oh, Grape, 673 Rural. That was very wide. What a name that is. I mean, I've never seen a name like that. But there you go. We're going to do our utmost here to try to catch up. And with mistakes like that, it's not going to take too long. So uh, winding it through these corners on the power nice and early. Group 4 really is about getting on that power nice and early to get the, the best speed down the straights. I'm not going to be within range here of an overtake. But it's a case of trying to take the chicane as nicely as possible. Getting a good exit, of course. Really abusing the track limits. And pulling evidently much closer to grape 673 rural what a handful of a name that is through the final corner lap number four 
two laps remaining. Are we close enough to go for this move into turn one, lap number five? Well, it didn't seem like I was initially, but we're going to break quite late, head towards the apex. The space was afforded by our foe, and I'm up into sixth position, the best position on the circuit. We all know that. As uh, now, we can perhaps turn our attention to the battle for fourth. And it might be a bit of a, a tall order trying to catch that much of a gap up. At the end of lap five, I did catch up a little bit. As you can see, they are fighting somewhat. Fastest lap of the race, 32-4. And this is the end of lap number six. You can see I was actually catching up quite a lot. In fact, P3 wasn't very far away. And through the final corner, I'm not quite going to be close enough. But what I would say is that it was a very fun race, a very fun and engaging race. Good battling. I think Nürburgring Sprint Circuit it does actually work really well in these cars. I think it was actually pretty decent. And there it is, P6 for F4H Super GT. Faster lap, up nine positions. Lovely stuff. But it wasn't good enough. We needed a top five. We needed a win. We needed something better than the infamous P6. So a set of qualifying time here, 32.5. Let's follow around this lap, around the Nürburgring Sprint Circuit, looking for that 100 board on the left, breaking just before it. I actually go in way too hot here and just carry a little bit too much speed in. And I would say I lost about two tenths there compared to what is really possible, at least by my standards. So that's on the exit of turn two, running quite wide. Into turn three, heading towards the apex, carrying the brake in. And of course, with this new set of physics, you have to be quite mindful of trail braking. You can run really wide on the exit of turn four. It really is track limit abuse, only except it isn't because you don't get a penalty for it. So it's, you're not really abusing anything. And um, exit of the hairpin, nice line. And I felt like I could gain through this upcoming right-hander by just going in a little bit early. Watch this. As you can see, the ghost try and be too clever going too wide to get a better exit, but it doesn't really work. You need to just carry the speed in and you gain a couple of tenths, easily gaining maybe three tenths on that corner compared to the Ghost. And then it's the infamous chicane. Breaking for that 100 board, carry the speed in over the first curb and then launch the second, carrying the speed through on the power as early as possible. If you, if you have that confidence on that power early, it's going to help you a lot. And it's not too hard in Group 4 cars, quite a lot of traction here. Through the final corner, it's going to be an improvement by more than half a second. And there it is, 31.9. I felt like I could go quicker. As you can see here, getting the first corner a lot better compared to that previous lap. And, you know, that's going to save me about a tenth or two. Um, but then I made this mistake here. As you can see, just running a little bit narrow on the apex. And as a result, that is going to hand me a penalty. So I was two tenths up on my time there, so I know I could do a 31.7. But we're going to have to go with a 31.9 for now. It put me second place on the grid up against the Swiss driver in the WRX who is half a second quicker. And let me tell you, this was one of my favourite races that I've done this year. I really kind of shy away from Group 4 races a lot of the time. But this race was really, really fun, really incredible. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, let's, let's dive in. Starting P2, I was quite worried, I must say about the Swiss driver on pole position. When someone's got a qualifying time half a second quicker, you think, okay, this guy is very quick. It's going to be quite a challenge to try to beat them. So my initial thought was I really need to, need to attack this guy early, try and get in front, and then I can control the race from in front. So let's see if we can do that. I feel like it's a, it's a good battle in the sense that the WRX and the Atenza they are both quick cars, but quick in separate ways. The WRX, I think, slightly better in handling through the slower corners. The Atenza, a bit better on the straights in terms of power. Trying to force him narrow here into the hairpin. And he's going to cover it off quite nice. I'm going to think about a move around the outside. Not quite there. Car behind, very close. So I need to make sure I judge this correctly. If I go for a move that's not going to stick, there's a very good chance I could drop a position instead of gain one. So... I could easily lose second and go to third if I don't get this right. Carrying good speed here, though, onto the straight. And it's going to be no match for the WRX. Flying past on the outside. And I'm up into the lead. 
as we head towards the chicane. I'm going to try and pin him to the outside on the right-hand side. Break him on the 100 board, carry the speed in, and that's going to be me up into the lead of the race. So now we can turn our attention as we actually pull out a bit of a gap. I think the Swiss driver there actually messed up the chicane somewhat as I was up the inside. I couldn't quite get the line he would have liked. And um, someone else actually lunged him into the final corner. So you see that gap comes up immediately. Lap two, therefore, is quite an important lap. My attention is turning to just nailing a fast lap and trying to pull away as much as possible. But that was a little bit too hot, I would say, into turn number one. Let's just try and focus on getting the rest of the lap right. And we can just edge clear of this battle behind. This could be an easy race. If from here I can just be nice and clinical and extend that gap by maybe another half a second by the end of the lap. So again, running wide on the exit of turn four, maximizing the track limits as much as possible. We now have a Spaniard up into second. And so I've got a different person to worry about. Through the hairpin, getting that rotation mid-corner, then driving out in second gear up into third on the exit. Maximizing the track limits here, just running a little bit wide over the Astro turf. Then here, trying to learn our lesson with just carrying the speed in and getting on the power nice and early onto this back straight. Crucial that you do that. At the end of this lap then, it's looking pretty good, but you know me, my race is going to unravel in some silly way, because it is me, into the chicane, and it's going to happen here. The infamous, the new chicane of death. Boom, there it is. The bollard of penalties is going to strike once again, and there it is, a one second penalty this time. It must have been more than two pixels wide, perhaps three. Who knows? So let's take a look at the gap between myself and the car behind. 1.6, nearly 1.7 at the moment. And that's going to be quite a crucial gap. With a one second penalty, I could still realistically stay in the lead once I serve that penalty. I just need to make sure that gap stays about 1.7 or hopefully a little bit more. If I'm going to get it up to about two seconds, that'd be great. But... We shall see. So again, lap three, just like number two, needs to be a really fast one. But this time, hopefully, with no penalties. As uh, we round up turn number four, again, carrying the speed through nicely. Just really getting to grips with this Mazda Atenza by this point. As uh, we go a quarter of a second quicker than uh, the faster lap, the previous lap, 32.6. I'd also like to know your thoughts on this circuit. Um, Nürburgring Sprint. I actually quite like it and I was quite interested to see it in the game. It would be good to see some brand new tracks completely or at least some originals. You know, this is just an extra configuration of an existing track which is good. But it's always nicer to see some completely new ones. But let's see then. Serving the penalty and the cars behind are going to get very very close as you can see judging this braking point and because of the penalty I felt like I could go in here a little bit harder. I went in way too hard like stupidly too much and unfortunately it means that the swiss driver is back in the picture again so halfway through the race we're back as we were at the beginning three laps ago so now it's kind of the situation has been reset and we're gonna have to go again so let's try and put the pressure back on this guy once more and see if we can get back into the lead and control the race i know that i have the measure of these guys i just have to be a bit more clinical you know, this could have been a very easy race. Bit of contact from behind and then in front as well. Trying to just narrow this guy down to the left-hand side and he backs out. As a, it gets a little bit feisty between the top five here. Top five all battling in one big cluster. So this is a very, very intense battle that we're in. Exit of turn four. This guy taking quite a narrow line. Getting a good exit actually. The Valex Motorsport driver into the hairpin. I'm going to carry a lot more speed in, taking a slightly narrower line, which is definitely quicker, put it, putting him right under pressure, trying to force him narrow to create a differential to give me a better exit, and again, forcing him narrow here. I know if I do that, I can try and get a better exit, and I should here be able to get the slipstream and the better straight line speed. And we're going to go to the left. It's going to be a quite an intricate move here. But it is going to give me the inside for the chicane coming up. Look for that 100 board. Make sure we don't overshoot like we did on the previous lap. Carry the speed in. And it's going to be another nice move. But we're going to have to go somewhat defensive here as the Subaru gets a very good exit into the final corner. 
and it's going to be a bit of a, a robust move, could we say, a bit of contact, but he's through, back into the lead, bit of door banging, but that is good touring car racing, you could argue. Over the line we go, two laps remaining, is he going to defend? He actually isn't defending, I'm surprised, so we're going to try and spot our breaking point on the 100 board, back to the lead we go, it's a really good battle so far, top four, top five, all within the radar, so we're all very, very close to each other, the Ferrari just sneaking in behind there, ready to pick up the pieces should it all go very badly for the top two here into turn three and uh, this is my second opportunity to try to pull away i've been um, fairly lucky that i've been gifted this other chance a second life if you like in this race and so i need to really capitalize otherwise i might not go, uh, might not get many more opportunities you know, this race could have very much been over if I'd just been a little bit more clinical and not got that penalty on lap number two. And it just shows you one little mistake can make your life a lot more difficult. And that isn't just advice about racing. That is advice about life in general. So as we come through towards the chicane, is he within range? I do not think so. Three tenths behind, it would be dive bomb off the century from that far back. And he's not going to quite go for it. Going to take a little bit more of a, a liberal line there through the chicane. Covering once again. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. I'm not going to let him up the inside. And give him zero chance of an overtake. He's very, very close though. As we go on to the final lap. It's a battle between the two of us. Down the main straight. Is he going to go for this move? I'm going to move defensive. I can't take that chance. I have to give him the outside. Onto the brakes we go. He's on the left hand side. The long way round is not going to be possible here. I'm going to make sure of it as he isn't quite alongside enough to get that move done. So under a lot of pressure here with one lap left to go to try to bring home this win. And it would be a very hard earned victory at that. So through turn three, can we try to pull a gap before we get to this hairpin coming up? Making sure as well, of course, that we don't get another penalty. That would be fatal this late in the race. There we go. We are getting good sector times through sector one. We just need to complete the lap and make sure that we bring it home this time without getting such a dumb penalty. So through the left of turn six, I believe. Into the right of seven. Onto the back straight. Crucial corner, this one. Down, down the straight we go. It looks like I've pulled enough of a gap here. And he's not going to be close enough. Seven tenths of a second. So quite a good final lap. I can kind of rest easy. I still need to take the chicane quite quickly. Otherwise, he's going to have a chance into the final corner. And as we go through, it's done nice and safe. Towards the final corner we go. And thankfully, after all of that, it's going to be a race victory and one that I really enjoyed. One that was really fun. And, you know, fair play to Polyphony, bringing out this combination. Group four cars around here. Um, really, really enjoyable. And... Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching as ever. Have an amazing day and I shall catch you next time. Goodbye.